Tonight, the action resumes with the first four games of the Sweet 16, and our man Steve Kornacki is at the big board with a preview. Steve, in the commercial break, I think you and I just ran through the entire bracket. <laughs> I'll let you take it away, but that Princeton team, if they beat Purdue, they can beat Creighton and who knows who else. It's that watching Princeton, everybody thinks maybe back a generation or so ago when Princeton would cause trouble for teams in the tournament. They had that slow down, meticulous shot clock draining offense. They still use a lot of the same principles, but they play a lot faster right now. They absolutely annihilated Missouri in the second round. You're right. That is a winnable game for them against Creighton. It is not impossible that Princeton could go further in this tournament as a 15 seed. But we always, hey, they call it March Madness. Madness. Look at this sweet 16 we're left with here. No Duke, no North Carolina, no Kansas, no Kentucky. It's the first time since 1980 that none of those blue bloods have made it through to the sweet 16. Instead, you have here representatives of 11 different conferences. That's the most uh, conferences to have teams in the sweet 16. It's a tie for the most all time, 1990 and 2011. You do see Alabama, the top overall seed. They're still standing. You do see one other one seed, Houston, still standing. If Houston could get to the final four, remember, the final four will be in Houston this year, but a couple of the big picture trends. We say it's been Cinderella's ball so far. 13 of the 32 games that were played in the first and second round, the lower seeded team won. More than 40% of the games were by seeding considered upsets in this tournament. Then you take a look at this. Down goes the champ again. Kansas, defending national champ. Arkansas takes them out in the second round. This is actually the sixth straight tournament that the defending national champion hasn't made it out of the first First weekend, the Big Ten, we showed you Purdue, the champion of the Big Ten, the one seed. They lose to a number 16, the fairly Dickinson Knights, and they weren't the only Big Ten team to struggle. You saw that Michigan State victory. Michigan State, the only one of the eight Big Ten teams that made this tournament that is still standing. And Michigan State is a seven seed. We mentioned Princeton as well. That win over Missouri, that was the biggest margin of victory ever for a number 15 seed in the tournament. And they are just the fourth 15 ever to reach this round, the round of 16. And if your bracket's a mess, here's a little consolation. Don't feel too bad. More than 20 million brackets were submitted through ESPN, and all of them had gone bust by the 25th game of wow. the tournament. The 25th game was... Fairly Dickinson knocking off uh, Purdue. So take a quick look here. We mentioned Princeton, the ultimate Cinderella story. Fourth time that a 15 has made it to the Sweet 16. How have they done before? Well, last year, St. Peter's, of the three that have gone before, last year, St. Peter's did get a win in the Sweet 16. Got to the Elite Eight. Got annihilated by Carolina, but they got one win away from the Final Four. Could Princeton one-up St. Peter's? That's the storyline. And then the bigger picture, we're showing you the long shot there, but what are the odds say in Las Vegas? They say that Alabama remains the favorite to win the tournament at three to one. Houston, again, the other one seed at four to one. And you got a bunch of teams here, UCLA, UConn, Texas. We talk about Creighton, but how about that? If the Princeton Tigers ever could pull out the national title, they're sitting there at 150 to one odds. Maybe you want to put two bucks on them. Could make a little money if they pulled off the mother of all upsets. So that's on the men's side. And then here you go on the women's side. They've also reached the Sweet 16 round. And there have been some. The women's tournament tends to have fewer upsets than the men's tournament, but there were two pretty big ones, big ones on the women's side. Miami takes out the top seed Indiana. By the way, the Miami men's team beat Indiana in an upset, and the Miami women's team beat Indiana in an upset. So good job to the Hurricanes. And Ole Miss knocks out Stanford. Stanford, another number one seed in this tournament. So who's still standing here on the women's side? Well, above all, the top overall seed, South Carolina. They are the defending champs. They are undefeated. They are going to be playing in South Carolina for a chance to get back to the Final Four, but always lurking there on the women's side, too. Yeah. Look down here, the University of Connecticut. Could they be on a collision course? Something we have certainly seen before. South Carolina, Don Staley has done an incredible job building that dynasty, but you're right. Watch out for Gino. He's got AZ Fudd back and UConn, and also that Iowa team with Caitlin Clark. They're incredible. Steve Kornacki with a great breakdown of the men's and women's Sweet 16s. We'll be watching tonight with a couple of bucks maybe on Princeton, as you say. Thanks, Steve. There you go. So